Thanks. Uh, in light of what Father Marcus said about evangelisation, I think one part is that at some point we were all asked to come. They're talking about a tap on the shoulder from Carmen. At some point, <clears throat> we were all asked. And after I found out that the guys at Oakley were like looking at me for one and a half years to tap me on the shoulder, it's pretty average and we should probably just uh, tap a few more guys on the shoulder and invite them in. And the other thing is, you look at all the good work we do, uh, right from the top, from the pre-support and education fund dinner, Archbishop's dinner and the good work, right down to just uh, helping out around the parish. Someone had to see that need and uh, talk to someone about creating something. So I think oftentimes we come to these meetings and we talk about everyone's getting older and well, I'm getting old too, but you guys and whatever. But uh, we can either curse the darkness or light a candle and I just think with the activities we do, we've just got to keep doing them, keep looking at the needs, and then inviting people in and tapping them on the shoulder, how we're all once invited as well. And I think if we do that with gusto for next year, we're fulfilling our charter as being faithful Catholic people. Sometimes I don't think we have to worry about all the professionalism and half the crap we get told about how you've got to be or whatever. <coughs> but um, just be men of faith and do that good work, and uh, next year we can come back and Hopefully next year we can have some uh, just some feedback comments, a few guys getting up for 10 minutes and talking about good work that they've done, how they've touched people in their parish and hopefully evangelised and done that good work. But uh, Carmen, a good year. You've made a few runs now. Now it's time to go on and uh, score, make a big score this year. So we're all looking forward to that. Thanks. Thanks, mate. Actually, on, on that note, I think, I'm going to miss uh, Mark, so hopefully we can get him back on in some way to in the district chairman because uh, he has been the, the captain of the district chairman for the last few years. He's done a marvellous job. As I always say, he's probably not the best administ administrative person, but he's, I'll tell you, he's, 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 uh, when he says he's going to do something, he's a doer. And we just don't have enough doers. And uh, um, uh, if he probably has, he needs to find an Andrew that can help him uh, do the administration side and the spruiking is number one out of that and stick at it and hopefully we'll coerce you in some way in the district chairman somewhere in there. You might have to... Yeah, yeah. Much fun there. What's that? Yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah. Uh, oh, sorry. Oh, first of all, sorry. Uh, Janet, just through you, I'd like to uh, ask any uh, branch chairman or uh, other representatives to uh, can we get some reply paid envelopes to us uh, here in the Killock today uh, from Father Bill himself after the meeting is ended to uh, pass around to your branch members to just the way the burden of taking a check back. And uh, we've got uh, 250 envelopes here to hand out today. Uh, and the more available from here in the Killock today, if uh, you let uh, the day and hour, you want more than all those. But today, we'll have it up here. Yeah, at the end of the meeting, somebody just opened the door, so that way they won't miss any point. Brother Terry. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'd like to suggest you uh, to everybody in relation to uh, a few things you uh, money, things, etc. As it's an old expression from the uh, day of the present year now. No money, no money. So the deal is that uh, what we've done is we've found out uh, a little bit of bribery and corruption with uh, local funding this place where we can get our money from. We found out uh, that we can get Fridays without any trouble at all. Boys from your home have got them. I've now booked in for 12 Fridays in next year. We've got two for this year, get more to do. And you can get uh, quite a bit of money out of that and also you can go and chase up people to help you. Um, and out of that, you can then struggle, kick and start to find members. It also, and if you're very kind to them, they often, when somebody doesn't on the Saturday, you get that. And a lot of the places, you can get $1,000 out of a Saturday or a Friday or Sunday. And you can do upwards around four or $500 each time on a, on a Friday. 
And this way, it's impossible for you to go and tap people on the shoulder and say, can you help me, please? Which we're doing. And I think that's a good <coughs> If you've got a bag of money in your bank account, if you're branch, it's very easy to walk up to the priest and say, we want to do something. He says, oh, well, what about that? that costs money? So we can pay for that. And suddenly your priest is very happy to talk to you. But, and I suggest you to consider that. Um, the Grand Regional Leader have tried the, um, in, in our district. Um, the <coughs> the um, the children, the assumption, the ladies from uh, Hostel Hospital came out, did a presentation to 36 people on regard to the, um, uh, what do you call it? The hands of your heart's care planning. Primary care, the, the care. Um, so Set it beautifully by everybody. Our uh, all advertises the nice Southern Cross will be on. Great publicity. Doesn't offend anybody. No political problems or any other thing. Quick presentation. We're now going to approach some schools so we can get to the tech, parents, and children, and we're now going to get to people in the bracket between about 30 and 60. So in that area to get to people with that problem. The other one we're bringing in is going to have a crack at that. We want to get up in front of the parents or children. So I, a friend of mine in Darwin does this. He produces packets of prayer cards and rosary beads and gives them to uh, the children when they have their first communion. And it's another way of publicising our order for the children and the parents. So we become not just an order that's there, but we suddenly appear with something in the hand, it's amazing what happens when something physical comes into contact. And I think we're in the order of sure that it's very sure so we can do something between everybody to do this, promote this simply. We're involved very into that way spiritually, which I'm sure Father would be glad to hear about. And I think that's the way we should start to be in this way in the future. Uh, more information about Rotary very soon. My friend in Darwin is going to supply us again. Any other questions? Sure. 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 Thank you, Brother Carmen. Next Tuesday, the Family Council of Victoria is having its annual general meeting and October general meeting in the Lloyd Martin Room. The Treasurer and Secretary for the last six years will be standing down. I think you'd appreciate that an organisation can't continue to exist if it does not have a secretary. The Family Council of Victoria has been in existence now for over 20 years. Um, I took over as secretary from Brother John Brennan and uh, Uh, the Knights have always had a presence in the Family Council, were instrumental in establishing it, and uh, have been, I believe, constructive in the way the, uh, the Council has operated. So the Council is now looking for a representative from the Order, a matter that I raised at State Council probably February, March this year, um, and uh, that someone, someone else, uh, has just not appeared. Uh, I feel that I've done my time, six years on it, maybe a little bit longer. Um, so if the order wishes to uh, uh, continue to have a presence with the Family Council, Someone's going to have to put their hand up. But the hand up is uh, on committee or is it secretary? No. Um, the Family Council is uh, an affiliation of about 15 um, Christian groups. And uh, they come together to share ideas. Uh, then there's an executive, a president, 
uh, deputy president, two deputy presidents, uh, the secretary and the treasurer. As I said, I've been running as treasurer and secretary for about the last six years, um, and I think it's time that uh, I stood down to let somebody else have a go. I think that the, the council is uh, a fantastic opportunity for the order to be able to uh, express Catholic views to other Christian organisations um, and also to, uh, uh, when the opportunity comes to make representations uh, that are certainly brought to our attention through various members of the, of the council. It would be a pity to lose that connection. Uh, so I'm standing here now pleading for somebody to put their hand up. It is traditionally uh, a role that has resided with the community relations officer. Um, Brother Michael O'Halloran did it for a while. Brother Michael Palmer did it for a while. I did it for a while. Uh, and then, um, so that's, that's the situation. Would anybody like to put their hand up to represent the order on the Family Council of Victoria? Do you have a meeting this morning, so we're here? Yes. And it's monthly, isn't it? Two monthly. Two monthly. Is it a day or a night or day? What, what time? 10.30 to 12.30. Religiously. So that took you two months, is it? Yep. And then the executive meetings we've been holding uh, via internet. What's the commitment? Is this the meeting or what? There's a bi-monthly meeting, two hours, 10.30 to 12.30. Uh, and the intervening month, uh, an executive meeting is held uh, in the ether. And that's it, just the event? Hmm? And that's it, I feel like I have to do that with your meetings. Yes. Six meetings a year and uh, the intervening months to prepare an agenda which is uh, approved by well, you develop an agenda in consultation with the other executives. So if someone is not here that's in the local area in the nights, um, could we take on trouble? Uh, what John was saying preferably he, we want somebody from the nights. Yes. Um, I did say nights. If there's someone in the nights that's not here so a normal branch member in this area, yeah. um, that fits the category of being a patient <coughs> of the time. Um, and they might want to be a on the shoulder. They wouldn't put their hand up, they'd be welcome to have a patient on the shoulder. So I didn't think of it. That's cool. I would like to say next Tuesday that I do have a, uh, uh, a successor. Brother, Brother Michael or, 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 and Brother Andrew, uh, happy to go to this first meeting. Um, and just show you what the commitment is. So that's not this Tuesday or next. This coming Tuesday. Not this Tuesday. 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20. 20. 20. 20. 20. 20. 20. 20. 20. 20. 20. 20. 20. 20. 20. 20. 20. 20. 20. 20. 20. 20. 20. 20. 20. 20. 20. 20. 20. 20. 20. 20. 20. 20. I think John Brennan will also be there. Um, I, will, I will probably continue, but I don't want to continue as secretary and treasurer. Will there be someone else that would be to take on the secretary and treasurer as well? I, I don't believe so, Andrew. Sadly. So you're, you're really saying that uh, uh, whoever of us will go, we're going to be the secretary or treasurer? Or both. <laughs> and the treasurer's role is not undertaken. <laughs> I'm the sole signatory to the bank account, um, and we I think there's about $800 in the account. Uh, income is totally from subscriptions, um, and there's been well, there's a couple of outgoings, but uh, it's not a difficult task. The, the secretary's task is a little bit more difficult. I've assured you that David Michael or uh, Andrew will be in the chamber at some point. 
on Tuesday. Thanks, Thanks Brother Chairman. And uh, thank Brother Andrew and Michael. But, uh, but the only thing is that uh, I, one thing I don't want to do is put all the pressure on state council to fill roles uh, because we're, all going to, we're already going to have this uh, the crusader is going to be the responsibility of state council. Right? Um, we will form a committee because uh, we just won't have time to do it. So, you know, uh, because people are a bit shy, we're going to be, we're going to be tapping people on the shoulder. And it's not everybody in here, but we'll be tapping people on the shoulder. <coughs> so, so if you see us coming, don't run the other way. Okay. Uh, there's a couple last things. Now, State Council uh, sponsor the, uh, the annual golf day, the Knights of Southern Cross. The next, the next golf day is on the uh, 14th of November. Um, we've got a couple of guns, which they don't even know are going to play in this competition. All right? Is that right, Tony? Yeah, yeah. But, uh, you on the shoulder. That's it. <laughs> no, but uh, uh, look, closing dates were the 20th of October. So if anybody wants to play the golf day on the 14th of November, let us know because uh, we'll send them a check of 500. I'm sure that uh, they'll, they'll accept our late nominations. All right. So, um, but if you can do that, it'd be greatly appreciated. Um, Last month I went to the district meeting of uh, Box Hill, Nunnawaddy uh, and Doncaster, I think it was, and I caught up with uh, Tim Shelby. Um, he's currently uh, been making these crosses. Right. Um, I think he's currently got an order from, I might have misunderstood that, I believe from Nunnawaddy for 200. So he's in the process of uh, making some of these. So if branches would like uh, these crosses, the monies, all the monies that he raises go uh, go to the homeless. So, so there's no money in for, in for him. Um, so yeah, same crosses as we just we, were, we did a uh, polygon to the last year. They had similar things uh, uh, overseas. They're so, hand crosses, and they're uh, ideal for people who are housebound or sick or in hospital. They just hold them in their hands as a sort of prayer. Um, for people that don't haven't got the dexterity, maybe, or it can. Um, so it might be that branches might just want to buy some, buy some, and uh, hand it hand out to people, uh, you know, from the parishes, that, or when you go and visit the uh, the sick in church, or. So brother Chairman, uh, brother Tim was saying to me their pocket crosses. These are the ones. Yeah. Well, but he was saying, I think they are probably keep them on you. Person as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. My, my wife actually, she always wears the cross and she wore it when she was asleep and she heard stuff because of the thing that's got to show. He would come, come so here today yeah. to promote it, but yeah. uh, uh, he had something on this afternoon. So he said to me, if, if, if any brothers are interested and uh, would like to uh, sum for their branches to let us know, then he'd be happy to produce more. Okay? So the, the cost is $5 per cross.